Good morning. It's like deja vu here. Thank you. So, Good. Coach, yeah. sorry if you're going up, just open it up. Uh, Will Cockle with Charlotte Sports Live and Queen City News. How surreal is it to kind of be back here and know what this process was like? Well, a guy told me a long time ago, if you stay in a business long enough, you go full circle. And uh, as I was driving over here, uh, when I arrived and looked up at the skyline, and I couldn't think about how much it had changed, okay, since back in 1995 when we started. And uh, But it's great to be back. Uh, I have nothing but great memories of my time here. And uh, look forward to working with... Uh, Coach Reich and Coach Evero and uh, doing whatever I can to help us be successful. Dom, Dom Scott Fowler, glad to see you. Hey, Scott. Uh, Good to see you. Um, tell me what you envision as your role here. Well, I've always believed this, that, that to be successful in any role, you've got to please the people you're working for. And, uh, and when you go into a, a new role, okay, you kind of evaluate that role and ask yourself, how can I be the most help to number one, a Jero, and how can I be the most help to Frank? And uh, so that's my goal, okay, is to try to do as much as I can to help a Jero be successful as a defensive coordinator and Frank as a head coach. And I've always felt that way as a staff. Uh, I know the best staff members that I've had, okay, are the ones that. Uh, did a tremendous job within their role and were a good part of a team. I'm Steve Reed, Associated Press. Welcome back. Steve. Um, at this point in your career, what, what is it that still drives you? I mean, a lot of people would probably be retired and, you know, on the beach. And I mean, what, what, why is it you still want to do this? Well, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, why are you still doing this? Uh, I do it because I enjoy it. I know that probably Scott and you will remember back in 96, I can remember we had a lot of national media in here, and some guy asked me, what do you want to be doing when you're 72 years old? And I looked at him and I said, I want to be coaching. And uh, God willing, here I am still coaching. So uh, I enjoy the competitiveness, uh, the X no part of the game. Uh, still, I don't think there's anything that matches Sunday afternoon for three hours. Uh, you know, you put in all that work during the week, and and there's no in between. You either feel real good or you don't feel very good at all. And I don't know what you find to match that. Okay, when it's all over. Josh Ty hurt with Carolina Blitz. Uh, Jero was just in here, and he was asked if he keeps you hip, and he laughed and said, "You stay plenty hip." So I want to know, how do you stay hip? Well, being around these young guys and watching them compete keeps you young. I'll say that, you know, uh, but. Uh, no, I, I, I think the game, the, you know, the demands of the game, all right? Uh, so a lot of things have changed. Uh, this will be 37 years for me in the league. But s some things and the most important things I don't think ever change. Dominic Carboni from NBC here in Charlotte. Welcome back. Thank I'm you. wondering if there's anything when you coach Frank here uh, or now have thought back to and reflected on that made you think, that even in that moment, that he – would go on to become an NFL head coach? Well, he was, he thought out everything. He was a really good decision maker. Uh, I thought he had great leadership ability. That was one of the reasons he was brought in here, okay, to be the first quarterback. Uh, I think guys gravitated towards him. And uh, it's been fun for me to watch Frank grow through being an assistant coach, a coordinator, and now a head coach. Uh, we had our first staff meeting this morning and, you know, very well organized, very detailed, creates a vision of what he wants things to look like. Uh, and I just think he has tremendous leadership capabilities. Hey, Dom. Uh, David Newton, welcome back. Yeah. Uh, what about the, the veteran um, of, this, of, this defense, of this staff entirely uh, impresses you the most? Because it's kind of like when you were building that first team, you want a lot of veterans on the team as far as players to, to have success right away. How, how can that be done with the staff? Well, I think there's a lot of similarities, okay, when you put together your staff and you put together your team. And uh, you guys remember when we 
first put together our team here, you know, I think one of the reasons we were able to have success early is because we had a great locker room. We had a number of high character guys and uh, guys that were unselfish, okay, that it wasn't I, me, my, it was we, us, our. And, and uh, we know there's going to be ups and downs uh, through the course of the year. Everything's not going to go the way, always the way you want it to go. And uh, how you handle the adversity is extremely important. And then more important, I think, uh, if you are successful, how you handle success, because I think that's much harder to handle than adversity. But uh, the staff, I think, sets the tone. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think Frank, Frank has done an outstanding job of putting together a staff of not, you know, uh, there's experience, but there's going to be a lot of energy, I think, and a lot of good teachers. Um, Having been a head coach and a coordinator several times in the past, being a senior assistant, what is, is that like a 30,000 foot view over the whole thing or kind of how does that work on a day to day basis? Well, again, you know, I think back when when I started doing this, because, you know, for my career, you know, I had six years as a position coach and then 25 years as either a coordinator or head coach. And then these last this will be the sixth year of doing this. So. What I've tried to do is say, how can I help the staff and help the organization? And, uh, you know, many times it's just things that you've experienced over those 35, 36 years. And uh, so, uh, and, that, and the role kind of evolves, I think, depending on who you're with. You know, I, I mean, I've, one of the reasons I'm here is because of Ajero. You know, I mean, Ajero was, was uh, our quality control guy at Green Bay in 2016. I was extremely impressed with him. I mean, he's very intelligent, uh, very gr good work ethic, uh, you know, and, and uh, we only had him for one year and then, uh, then Sean McVay hired him with the Rams. But uh, when, he, when he got the Denver defensive coordinator's job and called, I said, there's no question in my mind, okay, because I just, first of all, I like the person uh, you know, and uh, he's got great leadership capabilities. He's uh, he's like this. You know, he's not an up and down guy. The players will know what they're they're getting every day when they come into the meetings and the, the locker room. And and uh, I think the players respond to that. They respect that. Uh, he'll have credibility because he really knows what he's doing. And in my mind, he has that it factor. Um, Joe Person with The Athletic, good to see you. Good to see you. Wondered too. if you've had conversations with Ajero about kind of like helping him get to the next step, and I know it's not rushing to get there, but to become a head coach in this league. Well, I think he's got the right perspective uh, in terms of he knows that his job is to be the best defensive coordinator in the league, and I think he's – got those capabilities all right and, and so he focuses on what's the task at hand what's right in front of him uh, but uh, there's no doubt in my mind that somewhere down the road okay that will happen for him you know I've just got so much respect for him and, and uh, you know he's such a he's such a humble guy you know I mean he's going to give everybody else credit you know I've, I've said before I think the players here will love playing for him I saw it happen in Denver in one year you know, the, the, uh, the players love playing for him there, and uh, that's a big part of it. Curious, too, besides the skyline, as you've driven around the last several days, what else has changed? Are there any restaurants you, like, went to find and they were condos or anything <laughs> like that? Well, uh, the guys that covered the team here, remember I spent a lot of time here the first two years, okay? There was an office downstairs that – I didn't leave very much, so there were a couple of restaurants. Uh, one of them's not here any longer, okay, but I used to have my dinner there about every night. I had a booth back in the corner and a paper, and so when I would leave here, right down, right down the street here, it was a little Italian restaurant. Yesterday, um, Coach was, Frank Reich was saying that he would despise having a bunch of yes men on his staff, and that the thought he wants to people with different thought processes. How important is it for you guys to all think differently, be on the same page, though, and also be able to tell Frank when they disagree? Well, I think what you're saying, that's part of being a good leader. You know, you, you don't want people, okay, that won't express their opinion. 
Uh, to me, that's the way you grow, and uh, and that's part of having a good staff and a good team. On and uh, so, uh, you know, I I just believe that's the way Frank's going to be. You know, he's going to want everybody to express their opinion, and you know, as part of a collective effort, and he's the leader of everything. Tom, Mike K from uh, the Charlotte Observer. You've also worked with Peter Hansen and uh, Bert Watts in Denver. I was just curious, what what did they bring to the table into this staff? Well, I think starting with Peter, you know, he was with Jero uh, with the 49ers. Uh, and uh, so he's been around the system uh, for quite a while. Uh, he then went on to become a defensive coordinator, okay, at the college level. And uh, I think he's a good teacher. Uh, again, I thought that his players uh, really performed well uh, a year, you know, this past year. Uh, Bert Watts uh, is a guy that I spend a lot of time with uh, in the meeting room and, and uh, brings a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, every day he's, you know, I've always felt that within a staff you have to have certain energy guys. That, and, and, you know, not everybody's the same. But, uh, but uh, I, think, I think Pete is a very good teacher. I think Bert's a good teacher. He's been a coordinator in college. Uh, they're both guys that relate well to the players, I think. You've been around the 3-4 forever. Um, as you look at this team, what do you see as is, is maybe pieces that you need to add? Obviously, you know, there's differences with the 3-4 bigger nose tackle, uh, speed rushers on the outside. What, what do you see as this team needing to, to change to fit that? Well, we're just starting the process right now, you know, of evaluation, because I think the first thing you do is we've got to do a good job of evaluating the players who are on our team, you know, right now. and. Uh, but I, having gone through this many times, uh, you know what you want it to look like. But the initial phase is you've got, I think it starts with who are your best players? How can we get the best players on the field and utilize their abilities? And you adapt the scheme more to the players, OK, than adapting the players to the scheme, I think. Because I, you, I think you make a big mistake if you try to plug a square peg into a round hole. So. It's a process you go through, and we're just initially starting that process. And it starts with doing a thorough evaluation of the guys that we have right now. How important is it to have Jero made to what you did initially with the 3 4? What kind of tweaks has he made to what you do that have maybe taken it up a level? Well, everything evolves. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is such a copycat league that the minute that you have success in one area, everybody studies it, and then it's less successful, okay? So you have to constantly what's going to give us an edge here and there and uh, sometimes that depends on the players you have okay adapting to you know what you think uh, will give your top playmakers a chance to make plays and uh, so that to me that's the fun part and the challenge okay coming into a brand new situation you know because it's like putting a puzzle together and and uh, so you know what you want it to look like but uh, you know it'll be a work in progress. I'm curious when you watched film on the Panthers when you played them, what jumped out to you on their roster? Well, I thought they were a physical team when we played them here. I mean, they their front did a very good job of blocking us. Uh, they ran the ball well, which set up their play action passing game. And uh, so I, I always evaluate a team can they keep you on your heels a little bit keeping the down and distance to their advantage because coaching defense I've always felt like if we can dictate for example win on first down and we get you in second and long there's an awful lot of things we can do to create problems for you and uh, in this day and age you know with these quarterbacks that are in the league you've got to be disruptive to them to have success I think but uh, but I thought the Panthers did a great job of, of dictating the down and distance because of their ability to run the ball and play action pass on the early downs. Will part of your role be self-scouting for the offense as well? Uh, you know, just kind of how defenses will see the offense. I know Jim's also involved in, in all three phases, but will you help self-scout too as well? Well, you know, I'll have my hands full probably scouting the opponent for the defense and the tendencies and those types of things, you know. So uh, that'll be, you know, where a lot of my focus will be in, in terms of uh, 
looking at the upcoming opponent, uh, presenting their tendencies and those types of things. Uh, who have you heard from since it was announced you were coming back? Well, <laughs> I've I've gotten a number of calls. Okay, some of them I had a, haven't had a chance to respond yet to, but just people that you've worked with. Okay, and obviously, anytime you're going into a new situation this day and age, there's plenty of people calling you wanting wanting to get a position, you know, on the staff. All right, so and uh, that becomes tougher and tougher when you've worked on as many staffs as I have. There's a lot of people, okay, you know and have worked with, but but that's one of the things that. I look forward to on this staff because guys like James Camp and I was with for nine years in Green Bay, you know, Deuce Staley I was with in Detroit, Todd Wash I've been with in Jacksonville and Detroit, uh, the guys coming from Denver and uh, Jarrow, okay, that we've worked together. So I've worked with most, most of the guys on the staff. Well, what about folks from this organization who maybe you were with previously? Well, uh, you know, Donnie Toner, our, our equipment man, okay, was the assistant equipment man when we came here. I mean, he, uh, as a matter of fact, he he told me, he said he remembered when they, they he picked us up for the first press conference and carried our bags, okay, to the to the hotel for the first press conference. What was it, Marriott or down here uh, back in 1995? What was your impression of you David that? Tepper during the interview process and how involved was he in, in even bringing you here? I really haven't had uh, much contact with Mr. Tepper, but uh, I certainly look forward to meeting him and, and uh, I've heard nothing but really great things about him. As I recall you used to, you look in great shape now, but back in the day, I think you started the treadmill at 6'9 and worked your way up. What, what are you at now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I still, that's part of my day, okay, is, is getting on the treadmill. So uh, it's like getting up and brushing your teeth. We've heard a lot of fun ways to describe Deuce Daly. How would you describe Deuce in about a sentence? Deuce brings as much energy to staff as any staff I've been around. I mean, he's he's a guy that uh, you feel his presence when he's in a room. Anything else, guys? Thank you. Thank good, you. good to see you all.